Hello everybody and welcome to this Train Sim TV video. This is Mark and uh, today I'm going to be taking a look at this brand new product from Armstrong Powerhouse. It's probably the most eagerly anticipated product that has come out on Train Sim lately the last few years. Certainly for myself it's uh, something I've been looking forward to for years and years and to be honest it's hard to believe we finally have it. That is the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 37 Pack Volume 1. Uh, which covers the refurbished examples, so 37.4, 37.5, 37.7. Seven. It does not include like 37.9s and stuff like that. And what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to run one of the scenarios that's included. I've just set myself up a free roam on the West Town Online South. Uh, and I've placed this loco here, 37.46, the Saltire Society. And the reason I've placed this and the reason I've got this loco on this route is that I feel this is where the, lo the pack is at its strongest, representing the 37.4s and particularly representing them pre RETB, uh, just before they got the RETB got added, and I'll go into the reasons for that in a bit. But um, I think the 374 is generally the best represented subclass by a long way in this pack. And this version here is a 374, it's 3746 the Saltire Society in its 1980s condition, um, with some lovely weathering going on there that you can see. Now I've set it up with cold start enabled, so I'm going to go right through the startup process and generally just go for a few features of the loco and then sort of um, take it for a little drive so you can see what it's like and, and sort of see how it goes. Um, I'm sure we'll be doing more videos on this channel, looking at it in the in actual scenarios moving forward. I know Tom's already got some stuff going on there, so yeah, I'll uh, get started. So yeah, looking at this from the outside, I mean, it is stunning really stunning I love the texture work as well let's look at the detail on those textures there the weathering is uh, certainly impressive modeling wise I really can't see anything at all wrong with it really it does look fantastic and there's so many little options that you can do when you're setting these up in the scenario editor you can set like uh, blackhead code boxes you've got different buffers you can change the bogus to cp7s or fabricated I believe it is, you've got the snow plows which you can remove there's so many options, and nameplates on and off, some of them have more than one nameplate you can have the logos such as the Eastfield um, West Island Terrier, the Scotty Dog you can have that on or off, you've got the Highland Stags that go there on some of them, the Inverness allocated ones but we're going to be looking at this one today, this is 37406 as I said it's an Eastfield allocated 374 from the 1980s and it's in its 1980s guys um, now I'm not going to go into all like the details of the class and everything, but basically the 37.4s, when they were brought out, they were designed, they were modified class 37s to add electric chain heating to the class. They then got added, um, they got RETB, Radio Electronic Token Block Signaling added, not long afterwards, but they came out of works. And their main intention was to have uh, the electric, electric train heating box added so that they can heat trains without having to use steam heat and stuff. So that was the main purpose of the 37.4 essentially, to create a passenger version of the class 37. So these 37s were split, split between Eastfield, um, Inverness and also Cardiff had quite a number at the start. Um, they were mainly in Scotland, as I say, split between Eastfield and they operated on the West Highland Line to Malaga and Fort William and Oban. And the Inverness ones operated to the far north and Carl of La Couch. Now as time went on, they obviously went far, much further afield than that, as people will know, they're now, now running on the Anglia circuits um, to Lowestoft and Great Armour, they've also been running the Cumbria, and they're about to start running again in Rumley for the rest of this year, from May, so, such a versatile loco, and I think probably many people's favourite loco. So, let's get started with this anyway, now I've done the little introduction bit. This is the 37.4 model, I've just clicked on it there. Now, this is the first time I've done a cold start. I've added it to the number in the scenario editor, the manual details all of that for you. And I'm basically going to read from the manual what it says to do. So cold start means that the locomotive is in the following state when it loads. The main reservoir brake cylinder pressures are zero. The engine is stopped. The handbrake is applied. So to start off, number one, move to number two end cab, which is opposite the end to the facing, opposite the end facing the cooling fan. So let's go in the cab. And we are in number one end here. So this is number two end that we're in. Now I need to go into the manual again. Turn the master key in by pressing shift and W, which I just did. 
Move the reverse, move the reverser to engine only by pressing W. This will then start the engine priming pump. Leave this running for 60 seconds. And you can hear that noise in the background now. That is the engine priming pump. So that's got to be left running for 60 seconds. And then you press and hold the engine start button until the engine fires and the engine stops indicates to indicate extinguishers. Look out for the copious amounts of exhaust and noise as the engine warms up. So, purely for the purposes of this little show, I, I want to put it on clock factor 10. So to do that I just press shift and C. I don't know if it's going to affect the clock amount when we're in start up, I'm not sure, I've not done a start up before, but... I love to have the clock on, I think it just looks awesome. I think maybe with this loco, I have had a, I have had a go with this loco, don't mind, I've driven it for probably three hours so far. Uh, this, this subclass in the game. And I think that the clag maybe is a little bit overdone on factor 10. The, well, not overdone necessarily, but I think there's a bit of a gap there between 9 and 10. There's, a, there's no happy medium sort of thing, it's either all or nothing sort of thing. So, there's a bit of a jump there, but whilst that's priming, uh, I'm going to go on to one of my little bugbears with this loco uh, this pack and that is that the 37.4 pack has no option of an RATB radio set and that really you know that's a bit of a shame because let's face it the 37.4s are, are pretty famous for the West Island operations and the pack has gone delving massively into recreating the 37.4s and they're missing the RETB. Now, I'm not expecting it to operate, and I don't think anyone would, well, I think some people would, but we all know the reasons why it's not going to operate, and that's because Thompson Interactive and the EULA prevents that happening. Now, that doesn't stop, in my opinion, um, a dummy RETB box being added, and I think that would have been really nice to have. And I think it does sort of detract a little bit, having that there. It sort of kills the immersion a little bit. Um, and my driver, I had to drive it early, absolutely, down to Korean Lavish, absolutely fantastic. I, you know, it's the best... I'm not, 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 you know, ashamed to say it's absolutely the best thing I've ever driven in train simulator. The most fun I've ever had in 12 years. But the RATB missing does kind of kill it a little bit because it's, it's, it should be there. So anyway, now I've got that out of the way, let's get this engine started by holding Z as the manual indicates. And I'm going to show up while this happens. Now that the engine uh, light's gone off, we can let go of Z, I believe. And the engine will continue to fire into life. I'm going to turn my game sound down a little bit again, so that you can hear me. So we'll go back into the manual now. Look at, behind, look at the battery ammeter on the back wall, and check that there's a positive charge. Honestly, I actually don't know where I'm looking for this. Yeah, that, that's got positive charge. Um, test the fire alarm by pressing the fire alarm test button on the back wall. Is the next thing on there. Yep, that definitely works. Okay, so next up we've got... Lift the train brake handle pin by pressing... Uh, and at the same time, moving the train brake handle to full service by pressing semicolon. Okay, so let's try that. Full service. And that's going to charge the brakes up. And I've got to wait for the main reservoir to build up to 80, 80 psi, which is this one here. We're going to wait for that to build around. Or is it this one here? I can't remember. It's one of the brake chambers anyway. Um, next up in the manual. We're waiting for that to, to charge up. 
essentially. Yeah, it's this one here, look. So we're gonna wait for that to do that for a few minutes. So let's have a little look around it then while we're here. You can notice the sound now has changed, it's a nice tick over sound. You can hear the fans going as well, which is uh, really good. Now what's worth noting is that this sound set is a... And I know people have been uh, misusing the, the statement, it's not reused. Um, these are re-enhanced sounds from the Wavy sounds, from the Wavy lines, uh, class 37. A lot of them are the same recordings, although some are new. Um, and personally, from my experience of driving this this loco in so far, I can get, I, that's fine by me. They, they sound great. Uh, I think it does kill some of the newness, just because it's not a new full sound set. As you've sort of heard it before if you've played the Wavy Lines one, but they've been sort of this. You can properly thrash it now without any gaps in the in the power up noise or anything like that. So it's all nice and clean, and you you can get the best uh, sort of thrash out of it. And you, it I find that it's fine. Um, you know, it's it's perfectly fine, really. If at some point a brand new sound set was to come along, then I'm sure we'd all be really happy about that. But I think this is sufficient, certainly for for now. Um, so, are we still waiting for that? Yeah, we'll be waiting for that for a little while. Let's put this. I don't know if putting that into shift and async keys will make a difference. I don't think it's going to do. So, whilst that's doing that, I will change my screen over. And I'll show people some of the manual. So what we'll do is we'll go Of there, and we'll take a look at what liveries are included via the manual, which is a uh, pretty hefty manual actually. It's really it's 46 pages. It's a decent manual, and it's got some really good detail on it. Uh, I'm just going to turn my game sound down whilst I'm doing this, so that that's not in the background. So you get the R large logo. You get it without the orange can rail, and you also get it with the orange can rail. So that's 1980s style large logo. Um, logo represented there is 37411. And that's a fir the 37.4 subclass contained in there. And this is a 37.5 with the BR Rail Freight Red Stripe livery. I think it's just included. And you also get the BR Rail Freight livery, which is the same essentially, but without the red soul bar. Essentially, if you look. Although this is a 37.5 with the um, flat nose rather than the head code boxes. Then you got BR train load liveries, you've got uh, all the different sectors included there. You've got Intercity Mainline livery, which is, again, it's on the 37.4s, that one, I think, mainly. This is Intercity Swallow livery, which is on some, that was included on some 37.5s in real life that were based at Inverness. Um, 37.510 and 518 were two of those, I think. And they used to work the sleeper from Inverness in pairs. That's uh, Regional Railways livery, that's basically it. West best known for when they're on the North West Coast, the 37.4s. Transrail was carried by 37.4s and 5s. I'm not sure about 7s, but I know it was 37.4s and 5s, and that is an example of 4 there. Uh, mainline grey livery. And you get into the post privatisation liveries, really. Uh, mainline livery, which was carried by a few 7s, I'm not sure about any 5s. Load haul livery, which carried by 5s and 7s, as seen there on 713. Then you've got two versions of EWS, you've got EW and S and EWS, and that refers to the EWS on the body side there. So you've got EWS there, but there's also a version with EW and S, which is the e earlier version, and that's worn by 37422 in that picture. You've got the Royal Scotsman livery, and I think there's a couple of varieties of that, I'm not sure. I know in real life there was certainly a couple of varieties of it, but that's 37421 there, the Royal Scotsman. You've got the West Coast Railway Company livery. Which is worn by their 37.5s and 7, 706. Direct rail services livery. Uh, that was the original one. And then you got the compass 
Lefou. And then the newer DRS Lefou, worn by 37716. Note the flat nose there on 716. You got a 422, which is there in its DRS plain Lefou. Then you got DB Schenker, which is the blue and grey, which was worn by 37419. Although it didn't exactly do much with it, but it, it did wear it, and then seven, 670 did wear it with a bit more success. you got Colas Livery, that's worn by 521 and 421 in real life, uh, and th that would be in this pack. you got the Euro Phoenix Livery, um, Real Operations Group. Note there on that livery that you've not got the motor working socket on the front, but I am told that via numbering you can actually add that, so that's uh, good. And then you go into the driver's cab guy. Now let's take a look back at the game and see how we're doing. See if the brakes helps to operate in. I believe they are now. So let's go back to where we were doing the cold start. So cold start. We were at and we're moving train back to running and confirm the brakes are fully released. So we're just waiting there for that to go into 80 to confirm that they're fully released. They are almost there. So we're just waiting for that to finish going off. It is virtually done now. So moving on to the next stage of the manual. We move the brakes back to 68%, which is full service. So you hear that click there. I just check that they fully apply and fully release. This is just a brake test that we're doing at the moment. We're having to wait at the moment for them to get round. Now it looks like they are still charging up actually a little bit, so we'll just uh, get on with it at the moment. So otherwise I'll be sat here all day. So now we need to release the handbrake by turning it, an anti, turning it in an anti-clockwise direction until we can turn no more. Oh, the handbrake is this here, on the other side of the cab. Nice handbrake sounds there. Although you won't be able to hear it because I've turned the game sound off. Now let's turn the game sound back up again. So that you can hear the game. And I'll turn my voice up quite loud so that you can still hear me because I know on some of my videos you're not going to hear me properly. Okay, so if according to the manual we are now ready to move. So what we're going to do first is we're going to change ends, so we need to, I presume, take the reverse out, shift and W to take that out, take the um, master key out, change ends, and now we've changed ends we can reinsert the master key. Welcome to engine only, and then we need to flip the AWS change on switch at this end to activate AWS. Straight away after cancelling the horn there that you get. And then we can put the local into forward now, and we're ready to go. So, first thing we're going to do here before we leave is put the boot indicator light on, tap 8 for H for the. Uh, put the headlight on there. And then we've got to turn the tail lights off at this end as well, so flick those off. And they're both off now. Right, so now we're pretty much ready, so we're going to open some windows, because why not? And then you can also, with this, open the door. Although I'm told um, with the 205 you could actually sort of open the door and leave it half open and stuff like that, so... Not sure why you can only click it on this, but anyway, that's a minor point. Doesn't really matter. 
I'm just going to go into the map. What we're going to do is we're going to go down to Fort William Station and um, pick up some coaches there and take them up to Spinbridge just so we get a little bit of a drive in. We're set there for Fort William Station and we're ready to leave. waiting for the brakes to go off there. Right. I love the sound effects there as well. I mean in total the whole thing is so immersive that you just do feel like you really are there so we're now ready. Now that is my other little niggle with the pack is the horn. I don't I don't know. That lower tone sounds fine. And I'm sure the real tone sounds like that, the higher tone, but it doesn't sound quite right to me. But again, that's not that's not to say that it's uh, Ron or anything, that's just saying personal, I'm not necessarily a fan of that. It sounds a bit plasticky or something. The lower tone's fine. It's just the upper tone. But anyway, so I'm going to move off shed. And one of the other things I do love about these sounds, and I think I think I'm right in saying that they're new, or certainly overhauled, is the bogey sounds. Sound like you got some real weight to them there, which is good. So we're now moving off for Fort William Shed. I'm going to leave the shed now and head down to the station. So as I said in this pack you do get the 37 fours, you also get the 37 fives and 37 sixes, uh, 37 sevens, sorry. You get the 37 fours, fives, and sevens. I'm just going to set back over these points. Now you don't get the Brush refurbished cab versions, which you see on 423. Uh, so that's the one emission from the modern 37.4s, really, that's uh, not available. So the 37.4s, you get 73 different plaques, nameplates, and stuff like that. There's all sorts of um, combinations that you can do, and I think it's certainly something that's never been seen before on a pay wave add on or any add on for trains, for that matter. I think it's, it's fantastic to see one subclass of 31 locos to get. That amount of um, detail is incredible. Uh, it's fantastic. The, the pretty much every livery they've ever worn is in there. Um, the only emissions, really, as far as I know, um, are BR Green, which was carried by 37403 and another variant of it by 411. Um, I know Armstrong Power Sound in the past, I believe they said they don't do one-off liveries, so it's kind of within that, I suppose. Although I feel that, certainly with 411, the amount of work that it did in those livery, in that livery, uh, it, it did a lot of quite important, or should I say, well-known work um, in BR Green, and probably people would have expected that, so it's a shame not to have that. But, um, I'm sure some of the community will do it at some point. But uh, beyond that, I've never seen a pack so well catered for in terms of a, one subclass of loco. 
uh, quite startling, startling really. Right, let's give this one a bit of fresh. And that just there at the end of that little clip, so you can see as I um, notched off there and powered back on, you could clearly see that the gaps in the AP wavy line sounds have gone. So with the wavy line sounds, there'd have been a big gap there when I was shot off and powered back on. And with this new sound set, uh, set of improvements to the sound set, should I say, um, that's gone and you can just literally power on and off to your cast content. When you initially power on, there is that two-second delay, so you get a little bit of a delay when you fully power it. But when you actually, so you say you're on full power, you go back to 80%, you'll get instantly back to 80%, and then you full power it again, it'll instantly go back to full power, so you can really get some cool effects out of it doing that. Um, and that's brilliant, really. It uh, makes for a really immersive drive. And I think that really does make it acceptable to have the same set of sounds on it. Um, I don't think that's really a big problem. So on the negative side of getting the fact that we've got all this 37 fours included, um, unfortunately we have suffered really in, in the 37 fives and sevens. In that I don't believe there's any nameplates for the 37 fives and sevens included, which is a real shame when you consider how sort of well known some of them are, such as. 37688, um, you can clearly see on that DRS reskin um, where the nameplate should be on the number, if I remember rightly. And there's a lot of others, like uh, 37521, used to be called English China Clays. And I'm not going to suggest that you make all the names for every 37 ever built uh, in the 37.5 and 7 category. Certainly more 37.5s were named than 7s because there was more of them, but. Um, it would have been nice to have seen some names, I believe. Um, you know, especially when the price tags up there at 25 quid. Uh, and I'm not going to, you know, I know there's been a lot of controversy about that and people complaining, but um, I'm happy to pay 25 quid for this product. Um, I think it's well worth that because I'm a, a massive 37 enthusiast, and I'm sure most people know that know me. You know, I'm a massive 37 enthusiast. So to me, 25 quid is absolutely worth that. And I do, I would not ever swear away from that. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Well worth 25. And I would have actually paid more to have had a fully featured 37.5 and 37.7 um, with all the nameplates and the little gadgets that this 37.4 subclass has. You know, the 37.5s and 7s, they look great in the game, don't get me wrong, but they are missing like the super detailing sort of side of things, which is the nameplates and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that's my biggest sort of bugbear with it really is that it's missing that um, stuff because it sort of makes the 37.5s and 7s feel like an afterthought, and I'm sure that's not the case, but that's how they feel because they're missing the details, and also um, the physics don't seem to be any different for a seven. Um, you know, the driving com driving methods and stuff like that. Um, which is a little bit strange, considering that they are separate locos in in some senses, or certainly they've got the extra ballast weight on the seven, so that's a bit strange. But um, overall, well worth twenty five quid. So we'll set up now and change ends. Put the reverse about to off. And shut down the brake there. The ADS change end switch off. Take the master key out. And then we're going to take the headlight off, which is this one. And also take the root indicator off. And then we're going to change ends back to this cab. And this end, then we're going to change the Put the change end switch to the top there. I'm going to open the windows. 
both sides. And then we're going to set up the turn, turn, turn the both tail lights off, the route indicator on, the headlight on, and then we're also going to go over this side and we're going to turn on the electronic strain heating. Just because you can. Now this is sort of speculation, but I'm not sure that actually there's any performance difference in the pack with the ETH turned on, which I think in real life certainly there should be. And I don't know if it's specific to certain 37s, but I know when I've heard some 37s in real life, when they've got ETH turned on, you sort of hear them revving over a bit more. So the tone doesn't turn change on this, but that may be just me thinking that and not actually knowing that. So... Uh, if that's me, then I apologise for that. Apologise for that. So now we are ready to leave. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the road first to Speen Bridge, which is just as far as we're going to take it today. And I'm just going to turn the game sound up a little bit. so that you can hear that clearly and I'm going to do a departure and I'm going to not try and off with the throttle full power first of all and then I'm going to knock it back and then keep knocking it back up again so you can sort of hear what I said about the instant changes in sounds there so I'll do that now that's cool I just noticed that this is the first time I've driven it from number two end note the horn Totally different sound, that is fantastic, I've just noticed that. That is brilliant. And that sounds a lot more authentic as well in my opinion. That's that's superb. That's that's brilliant, I love that. Right, so let's get on with this. So as I say, I'm gonna go to full throttle first and then start notching back. And then not and then but pull it back and then pull it back to full throttle again. Try that again, I think I had the low cut break on. There we go, that's better. Okay, so I'll go to full photo again as I said. Another thing I should have noted actually is um, the coach sounds. I've uh, Armstrong Power has recently released an update for the Mark II A to C and Mark II D to F pack, um, which improves the sounds considerably. So if you own those packs, make sure you re-download them because the sounds on them now are out of this world. They are absolutely brilliant. Uh, I really love them, and I know that uh, a lot of people do as well. So that's really good. So again, I'm going to give it full throttle here in a second. Now this horn on this end is actually much better. I much prefer this horn. That's awesome.
So yeah, as I said, you got the new uh, coach sounds, which I'll let you listen to now. But these are absolutely superb. I love the bogus sounds and the flange and everything. It sounds great. So yeah, I mean, as you can see, like I've been saying, as far as the 37 fours are concerned, this is the complete package. It's, uh, it's superb. And I know there's a lot made by uh, some powers on a video about the wobbly antennas and stuff. From Cabrio. That is a funky little detail there. You see the uh, antenna on the front there is wobbly. You also get body side uh, body wobble as well from the loco. And you also get flies and stuff in the windscreen, which is just, uh, you know, that's taking it to another level, really. It's not detail that you need. I mean, you know, having said that, as great as that is, it would have been nice to have, I'd have had a personal, I would have had 37.5 names and stuff like that than that, but, you know, the cool features nonetheless. And it's pushing the boundaries, you know, even further. Now another thing I love about this pack as well, um, you won't really be able to hear it now because there's a lot of bird noise and stuff in the game around here. But the sound fading effect from the 37 is really good. Uh, I think that's been improved since Wavy Lines, I'm not, honestly I'm not sure if it has or not, but it sounds like it has. You sort of get that deep throb as it's appear, as approaching and then it'll turn into more of a roar as it goes past, which uh, is really good. Uh, and I really enjoy listening to that. It's one of the sort of characteristics of a 37. I mean, at the moment you can't actually really hear it very much, but it is on its way. So as, you, as it gets closer and closer, you can hear that throb getting louder. Just like the real thing, superb. I mean, from a personal standpoint, this is the sort of thing I've been waiting for for 12 years. I'm a massive, massive enthusiast of Scotland and 37s, and this is just heaven to me. Absolutely perfect. And thank you to Richard and Master Keys for doing it, because it is superb. So as we go up here, we'll listen a bit more to the coach sounds because I really like those. And I mean, the fantastic thing about this is that as we're heading along here, with all that clack in his face and you lean out the window, uh, it's just like being in the real thing. And that's, you know, what we've got to be aiming for with these fins nowadays, and it's amazing. It really is good.
I just love how you can mess around with the throttle and get all those different effects out of it. It's uh, super. One of the only other things I've noticed uh, is, um, I don't know if it's a problem with all train sim add-ons, but I know it's certainly a problem with some. Um, is the Z fighting that goes on now at that distance? It's okay. I can sort of, I sort of, okay, yeah, I can live with that. But as it gets closer and closer, it sort of carries on right until the point when it's around here somewhere. It's still Z fighting a bit there. You know, even at 100 yards, you, you sort of seeing a bit of Z fighting going on. Maybe that's something to do with child objects, though, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, that's the only sort of downside to the appearance, I think, really. One of the other big differences in noises as well that you'll know between the um, uh, wave airline sounds and these sounds is the turbo is a lot better. It's actually got the turbo one now. I mean those bogey sounds are superb. They sound like got so much weight to them. Which is exactly as you would expect from a 37. You can really hear the weight in those in those bogies. Fantastic. So yeah, all in all, I think personally I feel this is probably the way that the pack is at its strongest um, on the West Island line. With these coaches and this loco, I think it's perfect. Absolutely bang on. But, I mean, I'm, an, I'm a massive enthusiast, as I said, of Scottish railways and stuff, so... To me, it's going to be more special anyway, but I suppose to other people that might not like Scottish Railways, then, you know, that's going to be different, but this hits the spot for me in terms of the immersion and everything. There is, like I said, the niggles such as missing the RATB, but I can look past that because I love the class of local so much. One thing that was good late in the day of development was that they had a DRA after the community sort of hit back against the fact that they hadn't actually put it in. Uh, Armstrong Powerhouse and Master Keys actually went to the lengths of uh, pulling all nighter before the release to do with the DRA, so that was, you know, that's encouraging, it's good, great. Uh, appreciate the guys for listening to the customers on that. Um, personally, I'm really excited for the next pack, they, presumably the 37 O's will be cool. I uh, can't wait to drive a split box 37 along this route and on other routes in the early 80s sort of thing and even earlier than that the 70s and 60s. Because a lot of the stuff we haven't drained something like now is aimed towards the modern era and uh, it'll be nice when we can go back a bit. Those bogey sounds sound good in the cup, has to be said. So we are now just pulling into Spain Bridge, which is where I'm going to be stopping for today. We're going to be featuring this local a lot more on our channel, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I just wanted to have a little quick run through today and show you some of the features and stuff. By no means have I gone through them all, you've got stuff like the cab lights obviously. 
If you put the instrument lights on, you can actually use the dimmer switch to make them dimmer and uh, darker. On the back wall there, you can cut out traction motors, which I'll actually show you in a minute when I stop. Um, you can get versions of the local whisper, slow speed control, train length buttons. You've got this with the ETH, obviously, 37.4s. Slow speed control was used on locos that uh, works merry go service and stuff like that. So we brought that to a halt. So yeah, on this back wall over here, you've got all these various fins here. You've got the fire alarm test, the extra to cut out. Now here you can do the compressor changeover switch. Which is for the brakes and stuff. You got the brake selector switch, and you've also got back over this side. You see some some of the flies there on the windscreen lot, which is uh, again if you use the wipers, I think they should. Yeah, you see they disappear. That's that's cool. So yeah, the motors here, the car switch. So what you can do is, in a scenario, simulate traction motors being cut out. All you do is just turn the switch, and you can cut out two of the six traction motors to make it. A much more challenging drive obviously performance gets affected by doing that um, but yeah that's another little challenging thing you can do and then you got the engine maintenance switch as well and you can make it so the engine can be revved up in engine only mode rather than having to actually have the reverser in obviously got the opening windows as I've gone through don't think any of those up there work the wipers have two settings which is fast and if you press shift and V from the start you got slow Sanders, engine start and stop buttons, DSD panel. I had DSD turned off coming up here, but you can use it. Obviously, there's a set of cab doors open and close. And you got the ETH panel over here. Don't think they work. You got the ETH panel there, though, the handbrake. The NRN radio can be used. I haven't actually looked in the manual how to do it, though. So you can get different versions of the cab. I mean, there's loads of different actual cab um, variations. In fact, what I'll do is I'll go back to the actual manual again to show you this. It's only fair that I show it. So you got car cabs, which are, which are shown with NRN radio and GSMR. And then you also got a number of variants below which I'll go through. So you got standard refurbished cab, standard refurbished cab with NRN radio, which is what this is. Now in this, between this one and the next one really, in my opinion, there should be a standard refurbished cab with NRN radio and our ATB. But there isn't, and I'm not going to mention that again, but that's what it should be really. Standard refurbished cab with GMSMR, so you can see there on that picture. Let's zoom in a bit. Then you've got standard refurbished cab with NRN radio. Uh, DB Schenker, EW and EWS, Royal Scotsman liveries. Again, some of those I'm sure should have RETB because they worked on the um, West Island in that period. And the um, Cambrian. The uh, standard refurbished cab with NRN radio, so that's the DRS version with the data card version there. Uh, standard refurbished cab with GSMR, DRS and modern large logo liveries. And you also got the TPWS stuff on the wall there, look. And also train length button and DRA. You got standard refurbished cab with NRN radio, the West Coast version of it. And then you got the West Coast version with GSMR and TPWS again. And then in the cab features again, you got the slow speed control, which you can set via the local number in scenario editor, got the data card unit, train length button, the sand out button, which can actually be functioned in the train um, number in the scenario editor, ETH as we've gone through, driver reminder appliance, DRA, which is on DRS locos. And the GSMR cap variant only. And then you go further into the manual there, it gets a lot deeper, uh, which we're not going to do at this point. What I can do is try and show how to set the DNRN up. If we can find that in the manual. Here we are. So all we're doing is pretend we've got a number. So we've got, let's say, 123. And there we go. NRN zone 123.
that's cool. The volume button even works, which is good. So yeah, I like that. So yeah, I mean, as I said earlier in the video, I thoroughly recommend this at 25 quid. I, I'm a massive 37 fan, so you've got to take that into account when I'm saying this. But I firmly believe this is worth 25 quid. Because I love it. Now, a lot of people are saying that it's not worth 25 quid. And that's their opinion. They're absolutely entitled to their opinion. Um, really, it would have been nice to have seen more on the 37 fives and sevens. Because they sort of feel a bit forgotten. Um, as if they're in there to make the numbers up. And I'm sure that isn't the case. But that's how it feels. You know, truth be told, that, that is how it feels from my point of view. Uh, the complete lack of nameplates and stuff. Having said that, it's fantastic to have them in there and not, on, you know, rather than not have them at all. And again, I still pay 25 quid for them even in this current state. Um, and I think my key point that I keep referring to with the 37.5, uh, with the price thing, is people keep saying, "Oh, but I can get a route and a train from DCG for 25 quid." Yes, you can get a route and a train from DCG for 25 quid, but it ain't going to be as good as this loco. I can assure you of that. You are not going to get a loco from DTG with a route for 25 quid that's as good as this. You know, their trains, whilst usually visually looking good, generally sound poor and don't have any features in comparison. Um, I personally would much rather pay a premium price. And it's still not that expensive to my... I suppose if you're a young person or you don't have a job or whatever, then yeah, 25 quid. I mean, 12 years ago I was a college student myself, so I would struggle to scrape around for 25 quid and have a job. So from that point of view, yeah, I can see that point of view. But, you know, when I've got a job and everything, 25 quid to me, I would rather pay 25 quid for a top-notch loco than, 20, than 25 quid for a route and a crap loco. That's just my opinion. So, yeah, I fully recommend it. I can't wait for version 2. As I said, there are a few things that kind of hold it back a little bit for me. It would be great to see some new sounds on it. Um, the ones that have on it are absolutely fine, but they do have that sort of old effect on them. Um, it doesn't feel totally new when you drive it. But they're so well implemented that you, you can look past it. So, yeah. Um, really do recommend it, though. It's a fantastic pack. Just for the 37.4s alone, I would recommend it. Especially if you're a BR large logo fan and pre-privatisation fan for that matter. But also if you're a privatisation guy, if you're a modern currently a guy, I think they're suitable as well. Um, don't forget that you can check out me and Tom on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash trainsimtv underscore Tom. You can check out me on twitch.tv forward slash trainsimtv underscore Mark. Tom's usually live on a Wednesday and Friday. Please subscribe, we really appreciate your subscriptions. Don't forget to comment, like, and also check us out on Facebook at Trainsim TV. And thank you for watching, guys. And I'm going to let this slow code depart now. Thanks for watching guys, goodbye.